Good morning, so I'm just up, I'm ready to um, go and meet two amazing women this morning. I'm meeting Kat, who is the owner of the Tropical Spice Gardens here in Penang, and she also runs a functional medicine doctor. Um, also, we are meeting Zintong, who is a medicine woman from Penang as well. Um, and we're on a road trip, um, three hours north of Penang, up to the Thai border, but still on the Malaysian side, to a place called Perlis, to meet a um, herbalist, um, an old Malaysian guy who apparently is full of much knowledge on the herbs, spices and plants of Malaysia. Um, Zintong is going to translate for us, um, but he's going to share his um, plant knowledge with us um, when we go up and see him. So I'm very excited and look forward to introducing you. So we're just on our road trip on the way to Perlis, isn't it? That's yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, but this is Zintong, and um, yeah, Zintong. I just wanted to ask you um, about how you got well. Your story about how you got into the massage that you do, and how you how you teach it, or how you practice it. So um, I first got into massage because there was a. Taiwanese lady came to stay in our farm and she just took my hand and like I felt electricity flow through my body oh wow yeah and then and then I was like what are you doing and then she said like this is a massage and then I was like no this is not massage the kind of massage that I know and so she practiced this massage that's called Chi Nei Zhang Chin and Sung. Chin and Sung. Sung. Yeah. yeah. So Chi is the energy in the body. Yeah. And Nei Zhang, it means uh, internal organs in Chinese. So it's a traditional Chinese medicine massage wow. that works with the Chi to balance the Chi inside our internal organs. Yeah. So I asked her where she learned this healing art and then she told me about her teacher. So I went to, <laughs> to learn from her teacher. So Basically, uh, yeah, and then we just put our eye and the ears into the hands. So we practice deep seeing and deep listening into the body, yeah. especially uh, just the abdominal area because it's like the we call it the second brain actually. Yeah, so the first brain depends how you look at it. It's like the headquarters of our body because it's the place where. We digest food, emotions, inflammations in the body. Yeah. So whatever that is left inside, we actually the body can do the self healing by eliminate out through like uh, in many different ways. Some people you go toilet every day and then you detox also through your tears, through your your sweat. Yeah. And many different ways. Sometimes through movements. Yeah. And sounds and these are all detox but our body do it by themselves and sometimes when we are so busy or stressed we cannot our body don't have the ability to do that anymore so our our job is just to like try to remind again the body hey yeah. you can do this yeah. by yourself you know like just awakening the the self healing yeah. in, in yourself again uh -huh. and then after a few sessions when it, the chi is all balanced you don't have to do this uh, like for for them anymore. They can practice self healing at home. Oh wow! Yeah, so that through what... sounds and breathing. Yeah. yeah. So you you would teach somebody how to massage themselves yes. and give them the tools. Yes. Usually yeah. after they come from massage, and then I will send them a few like uh, videos that they can practice at home. So yeah. it's oh uh, wow. It's called the six healing sounds and also the um, inner smile meditation. Yeah. So it's kind of like a meditation that you can practice like when you wake up and when before you go to bed. Yeah. Uh, six healing sounds is about it's more about like using the sounds to detox yeah. your body. Yeah. And inner smile is more like you try to practice smiling from the inside. 
Yeah. So your organs are happy inside, so they can help you to do the work. <laughs> because they are all like automatic. We don't ask them to do the work, yeah. but they are doing the work for us every day. The heart, we don't ask them like you have to, you have to keep beating, you know, like yeah. every day. But they they do it. So it's right down so on a like a cellular level, like they're communicating. You're like yeah. the energy so you're that you the intention. Yeah, inside and say like hi today. Let's be happy and please be well. I love you. Yeah. Something like this, like you're talking to a friend, but wow. you're talking to yourself, yeah, your organs. So, the, yeah, so it's more than like, a massage that you're actually offering. You're ho offering like a holistic kind of yeah. Because because health is like it's like you can depend on other people, but there's only half of it. The yeah. other half you have to do by yourself, effort from yourself. Yeah. If not, then you have to keep on going back <laughs> to this healer or another person. To yeah, yeah. Of course, sometimes we need that, but like not. You know, it cannot be all the time depending on other people. Then yeah, you will not see the growth in your health. Yeah, yeah. It's very similar to the tradition that that I'm practicing is that we are our own healers. So you've yes. got the scientific, which yes. is like the uh, the medical industry, big pharma, and all of that. Then you've got the heroic one, where somebody would go to a practitioner and they think that only that practitioner could help them mm, that, that, that yes. they don't have the ability to heal themselves yes, but yes. how you're practicing the massage sounds like yes. you're enabling that person to be able to heal their own body like yeah. you're giving them the tools yeah, Is, would yeah. That be in right? the beginning they yeah. probably need to be guided because the body sort of like forgot how to do it already yeah, so they that. needed to be to be guided and then after that they can self-guide them Wow. Yeah, the body had the self healing. Like yeah. You said. Yeah. And is it is it uh, is it a Chinese tradition rather than a Malay? Um, it's tradition? a Chinese tradition. Yeah. But it's passed down in the Thai massage tradition as well. So it's a mix of Thai and Chinese. Okay. Which are my blood. So I <laughs> probably that's why it's very connected to ah, it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sounds amazing. And do you use any herbs or anything in 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 that? during the massage? Yeah, during so the massage. Mainly, I will only use uh, coconut oil. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. then we will start with soothing the abdominal area and go to the acupressure points of the related organs. Yeah. Where are the kidneys? We go to the kidney points and detox the kidney area. Ah, okay. And detox the bladder. organ has also their own emotion for yeah. example the stomach and the spleen they yeah. take care of worries so if you worry a lot it gets to it tends to become very bloated very easily yeah yeah especially many women because we we tend to worry a lot yeah oh, so if <laughs> you well, if you worry you can get bloated would you is yeah, that related it's like because it's like a wind ah, you know okay so you collect these emotions are like when you worry yeah it's like created this energy ah, with, like, without or, a form it started with no form yeah inside the body yeah you cannot see you can only feel like oh well, today i feel very bloated like, i don't feel like eating i don't have yeah. appetite things like this yeah so it started to show our body starting to show us like oh you are worried you oh, know well, it's, it's like a it's like a sign the body the language the body talks to us yeah yeah oh what well, well that um it's funny because recently yes. i've been really bloated and I didn't know whether it was my where I've, I'm just started to come through the menopause or um, but it, but it's been I don't normally suffer from bloating mm. but it's been the last about three weeks mm. just had a bloated stomach I mm. don't know why so it could be worry it can be worry can be from the food yeah the kind of food that we eat yeah because some food are more we say more wind more angin yeah <laughs> okay yeah for example like jackfruit actually has a lot of wind but yeah. a lot of people don't know because it tastes so good right it's yeah. so sweet and really nice and we just eat it especially like in in the in the in the village like my grandparents they don't uh, when they harvest the fruit they don't 
after they take out the fruit, they don't wash it with water. Uh, so you have to eat directly like that. Yeah. It cannot be have contact with water. Oh, when right. it has contact with water, then it makes you feel bloated after you eat really? it. Really? Yeah. So you have to consume it in the natural way. Yeah. In, in it just, has to be as it is. Yes, Nothing yes. contaminating. Yeah. Or so a lot of this knowledge, like we, we lost already this wisdom, you know, like how yeah. to consume. Yeah. We don't know, and we thought like, oh, it's nice to wash it a little bit, uh, like clean, yeah. you know, with water. Then we, we eat it, but then it actually causes yeah. gas in the body. So, so food, yeah. So was did so that knowledge? So have, has that knowledge been passed down to you from somebody? Or? So so you mean the herbs? Yeah, with well, herbs. Oh, yeah, you? like so that. So did your teacher teach you? Um, did you have to learn Chinese medicine or how did you come into um, yeah well, in the beginning I was already like I was a farmer before so I'm very okay. very connected to plants yeah. already since I, I did farming um, back in 2009 so yeah a long time ago so uh, yeah like I just started like everyone else with mm. no knowledge and yeah and I just started to plant and so excited to see plants growing and interested to know all the plants that I don't know yeah and then when I was in Australia there used to be a library where I stay so yeah. every afternoon I would go to the library and look at the plant books and <laughs> <laughs> study it. yeah and then when I came back to Malaysia to help my family on the family land yeah. then I learned from my grand uncle my grand auntie and all the communities who come every day ah. to, to drink tea with my uncle yeah and then sometimes they sit down and talk like uh, bush yeah. <laughs> but anyway like they will also share like oh this herbs is very good for this this herbs very good for that yeah so I learned from them oh wow yeah okay. and I used to sell in the markets sometimes when the old people they come to buy things from my stall yeah and then the next week they would come back with some plants and say do you want to plant this or you want to take this back ah. you know this is very good for this 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 because so they, they know were sharing with you yeah, their knowledge yeah yeah, yeah yeah maybe they don't yeah. buy from me but you know it's... like they bring their plants and share yeah and yeah they are wow like uh, yeah in the in the small towns they are very very much into sharing this because they yeah. feel like uh, actually not many young people are interested really in, in yeah, and yeah, this, yeah. And then they find me a little bit That's different it. from, <laughs> from S like why do I like all these things? Like at a, such a <laughs> such a young age, you know. Usually yeah. you go into your fifties and only then you, you started start to gardening. like plants. Yeah, and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, but, but I love it. I love to eat like ulams, the uh, the the raw salad from just going around the garden, just picking things. Yeah. Did, um, how is herbalism in Malaysia? Is it like um, accepted or like say, is it how is it in the it's culture? Practice, it's practiced widely traditionally. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we have also, like, for example, like the Chinese community, we have the Chinese doctor. Yeah. And sometimes you have healers that also use herbal medicine like Ayurveda herbalist yes, as yeah. well like they, they use herbal medicine so it's widely practiced but it's not like something that is for the curing some disease but it's more to prevent like to ah. keep your body healthy yeah yeah like you don't wait until you have cancer and then you start to take herbal medicine. Yeah. It's like something you drink herbal tea every day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can drink this today. Uh, for example, uh, the elderberry leaves today and then tomorrow you drink uh, maybe sugar cane. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, you know, like all these herbs in the garden you can yeah. just boil and so it's kind of you use it to kind of support your system rather than to yeah, than yeah. to cure something. Yeah, sometimes you can like uh, I yeah. think if if we we are skilled enough, we can we can of course use that as like medicine yeah, to cure. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, but not not uh, at a very critical stage. stage. Just stuff. Yeah. 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 It's and it's so easy. Yeah. It's and so easy because it takes a long time to see the effects. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. And is there a um, herb or a plant that's like your plant ally? Is there like something you're like, oh my god, in like especially <clears throat> that's native to Malaysia, like. In the UK, nettles is a really good one that we like working with um, and drinking teas for grounding and stuff. Is there anything herbal-wise that you really like working with? Um, if it's like the more domestic plants, maybe ginger. Ah, okay, yeah. Which is very common to most of the culture. Yeah. I guess Malay use it, Chinese use it, Indians also use it. Yeah. So. Like my uncle used to say, uh, ginger is the is the big medicine for all the people, especially like if you even if you're poor or you're rich, yeah. you can access to this yeah. very easily. The yeah. roots, roots, root crop, and then for leafy ones, maybe oh, there are so many. <laughs> there are so many. I don't have a particular ones, uh, but I I do use one. That's called Galengan. Okay. Yeah, to yeah. make cream for uh, skin. Oh, and for eczema. For oh, really? For uh, fungal infected skin problem. Yeah. Because in Malaysia it's very wet, uh, humid. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of people always get skin problems because of the oh, fungus. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So That's I, I, I actually uh, started to know this plant when I went back to stay on my family. Yeah, and I started to be, have very bad eczema on my head. Yeah, <clears throat> I was thinking like, how come I'm not stressed? I'm in the farm. And yeah, <laughs> why is that happening? Why is that happening? Yeah, and then uh, one day when I was working in the farm, I saw these flowers like with the yellow flower. Yeah, this plant with the yellow flower like a candle. Yeah, and I was like, wow, this is very beautiful. What plant is this? Yeah, and then I don't really know because like not easy to identify plants yeah and then like we had a volunteer who came at the farm as well and then he burned himself with the motorbike exhaust oh uh, yeah yeah <laughs> and, then, and then he had, he got a big wound and then my uncle tried to use every kind of oil or yeah. every kind of medicine herbal non not herbal nothing works for his wound it still like had uh, it was infected and after that he said okay this is the last one that I had I kept it for 10 years already I never used it before maybe you can try yeah <laughs> like, and then he just put it on his wound yeah and then it just recovered and wow. then I was like what is this this is so weird and I yeah. took the, the bottle and it has it and then my, my uncle said like oh he bought it like 10 years ago maybe from an Indian lady random Indian lady who came to the market in the morning and selling this cream wow and and he never see that lady anymore again you know yeah <laughs> and then it was just very like it was just faded words on the on the label it says yeah. Gelingang Gelingang and, yeah Gelingang. Gelingang so yeah. I went to google it yeah and then it's exactly this yellow flower plant in my farm oh no way <laughs> And yeah. so do they use the so, yellow flower so to... They, they only flower once a year. Yeah. During this time of the year, actually November until December, January. Yeah. They flower once a year and then uh, we use actually the leaves. Yeah. Uh, to to blend it with, to, to cook together with coconut oil. Yeah. And then after that we filter it and then we make it into balm with bee wax. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I, I learned this also like by just... I always go to the plant and ask, ask yeah. them, mm -hmm. like, what can I do and how do you want me to help the people? Ah. Something like this, like you talk with the plants. Yeah. Yeah, and then after that, like, like somehow this knowledge just come. I don't know how to explain this, yeah. but it's just like, okay, and I feel like my intuition tell me that I have to take the plant, go to the kitchen and do this, do this, do this, add this, add that, and, and, and then just come like this so wow it's 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 like a wisdom from the land yeah it's it's 
it's not like I think when we allow ourselves to be open to it, then they come to us. Yeah. 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 And and everybody has different connection. You know, I'm more connected to plants, but some other people more connected to say animals. Yeah. Yeah. Some connected to more the land, the trees, the mountains, the rivers. The, so. But you've got this connection yeah, with plants, yeah, and they tell you, so yeah, they will tell me like this. Yeah, so that's that's how I learn. Like when I go walk around, and sometimes I feel like, oh, this plant is looking at me. Like yeah. why you're looking at me ah. today, you know? And then so I would sometimes I would just pick it without knowing why. Yeah. And then someone would turn up at the door and say, I'm looking for this plant. Do you have it? And it's exactly the plant that I just picked. picked. Yeah. So it's very much so, based on your intuition and just listening inside, yes, yes, and yes, a bit yes. like your massage. The same, you're listening. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I like that touch. It's it's very intuitive and yeah. It's a kind of like very subtle language that. Yeah. We yeah. Use. Yeah. You know, now yeah. we don't. We are very logic now. We yeah. Don't, so. Yeah, so we're looking much. in books and like. But this is the knowledge from the inside, intuition through feeling rather than in, in, intelligence. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. It's another kind of intelligence. It's uh, yeah. inner intelligence. Yeah. I think we all have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mothers, grandmothers, yeah. grandfathers. Yeah. yeah, all passed down. Yeah. And inside us, we just have to. It's the wisdom, isn't it? Wisdom. Wisdom. Plant wisdom. Awaken the memory again. Yes. This memory is already inside. It's like a seed. We just have to wake up the seeds and it will start to germinate yeah. and grow. Yeah. That's and amazing. The- okay, so one of the big questions that I have is that obviously I come from the UK and we are working with the plants seasonally so at the moment we're coming into winter so we're coming down into the dark void and we're using plants to help us dream and to root our souls Um, but I don't understand how that happens in Malaysia how because it just and then it's even hotter and there doesn't seem to be any seasons and I'm looking at the plants and thinking do they ever root down or or like yeah how do you work with the seasons or or how does it work in Malaysia this is actually very right your feeling like hot and hotter yeah and we always have hot and hotter and these are seasons Uh, rain or more rain (laughs) and sometimes dry so these mm. are also the seasons as well in okay the, so we are more working with wet dry yeah hot well we don't get cold hot or hotter yeah. so these are the seasons so different of the different year actually comes this different season so when it's drier then you see actually some of the leaves drop like when uh, like like autumn oh okay like rubber tree for example yeah they will turn red and then drop all the leaves during this time of the year so in december so yeah th- so this would be like your autumn yeah 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 dry period dry dry uh, dry season We're just going to go on a plant medicine walk with the medicine man um, and show you around.
kita ada panah jadi 15 minit lah kan hmm. ada herba-herba ke dalam ni? Ha, ni herba-herba yang ada dalam ni Serawi. selain daripada yang pamer di situ uh-huh. kita ada kayu sepang yang kita minum so this is a wind okay. kita mula cerita sini the dulu expel, ah, the okay. expel the wind expel yang ini nama pokok herba dia lengkuas manok manok? ya yeah. Lengkuas manuk Lengkuas manuk Fungsi dia Ubi dia ataupun Rizom dia ha, Rizom dia ha, Kita ambil rizom dia Kita bersih dan kita rebus Dan kita Minum air dia Boil, okay, this, satu. boil the roots and then drink the water Yang kedua Kita yes, ambil rizom dia kita bersih elok-elok, kita tumbuk atau tumbuk yeah. ataupun tradisional gilin ha, gilin ubi dia atau rizom dia lepas oh, tu kita campur sedikit bedak sejuk oh, ha, bedak sejuk untuk kita nak keluar angin tangan ke kaki mm-hmm. kita apa mau ambil bedak sejuk kita campur kita letak di tangan ataupun di kaki lah di mana-mana kalau kaki bengkak dia akan mengecup dia akan tarik apa nama angin keluar hmm. ha. pound the roots with rice powder uh, to expel wind so you put it on your hands or feet and it pulls the wind out okay. using the roots okay. hmm. ya itu lacan pun tak apa okay. ha. janji uh, jadikan ulam Mm-mm. Lepas tu kalau kita nak rebus bunga dia pun boleh Kita minum air dia okay. Selagi Selagi uh, bonyang ni Kebaikan dia untuk wanita Wanita yang kita kata Yang hamil apa, 7 bulan Ataupun 8 bulan dah dia hamil Lepas tu ada sebulan yang lagi Kan ada uh, nak melahirkan zuriat But because of this space, um, it's opened up opportunity for children's workshops to come through. Um, whereas that sort of died during COVID because I lost so many of the teams. It's suddenly resurrected again because there's this ongoing workspace that people can actually be a part of. So at the very least, what we what we are what we try to do um, is always create good soil here. So we're constantly mulching. We're constantly. You know, there's a bit of more of a system now, whereas the old leaves used to just be spring, you know, tossed here or tossed somewhere out of sight. Mm-hmm. We're like, okay, bring bring the leaves through here now because we can actually mulch it, and that's going to regenerate the soil. Mm-hmm. Because as you can see, in a lot of the places, it's quite sandy. It's not it's not terribly good soil. Mm-hmm. Um, but as we keep mulching, um, mm-hmm. it will improve the quality of the soil, and that will. You know, cause plants to look like that. You know, it's just healthy. Once you once you have your soil in good shape, I really harp about this one because then your everything is so strong and more resilient against pests. We create our mulch just by brown leaves, uh, green grass cuttings, and when you can get a source of um, animal food, basically. So we use goat, um, goat dung, chicken manure. Those are all super good because they have microbes inside mm-hmm. and that generates uh, the with the yeah it generates the compost mm-hmm. and makes very good quality in compost. Mm-hmm. So there's a 
Indian temple down the road that has that that keeps goats, and so they they, they give away you know bags of goat goat dung. So it's mm. just having your eyes open to all these little resources in your neighborhood. Um, which is useful and so we've been producing actually very lovely soil so when we do run children's activities like planting activities we have soil stock because mm. it's amazing otherwise you spend so much money just try buying soil yeah. but uh, when you can just make your own soil nature, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, it's a lot you know it, it just completes the circle Trickle better yeah. yeah can you so, use dog as well. not not um like animals. i think if you let it rest for mm -hmm. enough time mm -hmm. over time it's not too bad but generally um because you don't know what the dogs eat mm -hmm. they you know where, whereas goats mm -hmm. cow uh they're eating mostly grass oh. um so so grass fed stuff is always much better they, their poop is much more desirable mm -hmm. than if they're being fed uh pellets because oh, okay. those pellets are chem chemical feed oh. and all this animal feed stuff is not it doesn't produce as high quality okay. so because of what the dog you don't know what the dogs are eating you're not going to get very good you know they're mm. going to have bacteria and all okay. stuff inside that you don't want mm. okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah but having said that my dogs <laughs> At home, they poop and we like shove into the garden, and <laughs> the plants are growing fine. So okay. it's, it's, okay. Okay. it's a balance, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I can't remember what these are. Do you do you carry? I can't remember. No, um, I don't know. I have to ask Anna when she comes. Mm. These are our passion fruits. Ah. Finally, after a year at home, because I've been it's been so frustrating. Because passion fruit is very easy to grow. Actually, yeah. it's it's a creeper. Um, it just needs a lot of sun, a lot of space to grow. And the, the fruits are lovely, it's super easy to grow, but mine weren't producing. So I mm. kept composting at home. I put my vermi compost down. I put all sorts of things. And finally, the fruits are coming through after like a year. So I, I know now from experience that the stems have to have be a good sort of diameter before they really start coming through. Mm. So it'll be a while, at least six months, unless we really heavily compost it. Um, yeah, so those are our, our passion fruits. That's black pepper. Mm. We put that down quite recently, so it will be a while yet, but it's in a good place. It's got some sun, it's looking good, so um, no concerns about that. Mm. And then that's our pumpkin patch. Okay. So again, it's been a popular feast for our pests, so uh -huh. we keep <laughs> losing our pumpkins, but now we've got healthy looking We've got mm. four healthy looking plants, so you know, hopefully this time if we bag them right, we should be on our way. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And you know, we've got our uh, aubergines. We had fruit growing last week oh, and then within a day it got gone. wiped out. It's gone oh. in the carrying. Oh yeah. So nice. <laughs> At least someone enjoyed that. So we need them. to bag yeah. things more. So we're learning we really need to cover things more. Mm. We need to, you know, put structures around them. But it's it's a lot of effort. Yeah. And then, right. The thing is because we're not out here daily, you know, it's a, we don't get as much done as we'd like to. Mm. This is mulberry. You can see the mulberry berries oh. pop through. Mm. Yeah, you can make jams out of that. Um and generally with with uh with this plant and with many plants you'll find that um pruning pruning creates the bush in us mm. and keeps things low so mm. as you just let it grow it will just become tall and spindly and then all the fruits are at the top and it's hard to harvest so you want to try and keep it low and just mm. keep cutting 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 the would same with lime it? bushes would you cut it and then stick it back in you or? can as oh, well okay. you yeah. can as well but if you let's say you cut it you, you know it'll start forcing new shoots to come out so you oh. want to keep it, the idea is you want to keep it low so it's mm. accessible and it's bushy and it, and it creates oh. more fruit that way. Mm. So you do that with lime bushes, with moringa, um, mm. keeping it low rather than high and it's just okay. hard, hard to reach. Did yeah. you have all of this garden knowledge before or did you just learn it through the process of doing this? A bit of both, yeah. So my husband and I, we, we, we've been at the gardens for 20 years now. I mean, wow. I've been looking after the spice gardens. Wow. So it's really knowledge along the way. It's been a long time. And I probably probably should know even more, given, <laughs> given the time, you know. I mean, there's a lot of but, stuff to remember. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but just definitely living with it. And, you know, of course, we grow the things that do well here, obviously, are the more local plants. So mm. because you live with it, you grow up with it you know, the fruits and vegetables and herbs in the market, they're already very familiar to you. So mm. It's just kind of intentionally getting to know them better yeah. and more and medicinally and all that as well. So, mm. yeah. 
Yeah, so okay. that's um, that's kind of the what we do. Um, I will. Anna's very good. When she comes, she will she will take you around to do, do, do and tell you this and that. Yeah, but yeah. if you see anything, you in, um, just ask. You know. Um, yeah. We have opened up this space as a space for the community to come by and just get involved and just kind of reconnect with the earth again because we were, you know, so desperate for that uh, mm -hmm. during during the whole lockdown, right? So. So then we opened up this space and we brought, um, yeah, it was open basically. And so we we're, we're still, we're growing. So we have people who come and go. And then we also have a steady group of volunteers mm -hmm. that come. Um, and it's all, it's, it's, it's like jungle farming. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's we're really open to the elements. We're very exposed. Mm -hmm. There's no fencing or anything. So we have, we have, you know, monkeys are jumping through wow. and, wild boars are coming through and burrowing stuff and um <laughs> we have loads of insects and you know it's constant you know uh -huh. drama <laughs> okay. but because we choose to use more permaculture methods um which is very mm. natural we don't use pesticides and all that and everything i mean everything we everything is built on um just uh up upcycling materials <laughs> So, so the the spice gardens doesn't really fund this little thing. We we it's self funded in that way by the mm. volunteers. Um, oh, cool. So we just go around pinching things and what we see in mm. our neighborhoods. Um, fallen branches, fallen bamboo, for example, are making those structures. Wow. So that's how we kind of you know bumble along. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you know we have successes and uh, failures. Uh, so over here is called the Black Face General. Herming Changjing, which is uh, when you when you directly translate it, it means black face general, oh. and it's grown a lot in the Chinese communities here in Penang um, because of its anti-cancer properties. Mm. So it's a sort of a, de a detox uh, leaf, and um, you know there are this leaf with the Sabah snake grass. I don't know whether it's planted here. It's planted in the other in the spice garden main with green apples. So so can't we know of people who blend this uh, drink mm -hmm. and they've gone into remission because of, oh, because wow. of uh, these herbs. So there's so much knowledge and um, we need to re regain and recapture because yeah. it's powerful uh, traditional knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. being lost. Mm -hmm. But you know, actually the older communities still actually uh, hold on to here. Um, so a lot of the Chinese community, they would still opt to try thing, herbal things first before opting for, you know, more Western approaches to mm -hmm. healing. Yeah. Um, what else do we have here? We just planted this recently. It's a little, it's a herb. We, we use a lot in our local salads. And, and here, a, a salad is typically eaten with a sambal blachan. It's a hot, spicy sambal mixed with a fermented they were, fish paste. They were all high, weren't they? They were really high, so they've all died back and now they're, we're, we're, re we're regrowing. Uh, yeah, yeah. And this is like a, it's like a sweet potato leaf. It's a, bit, um, it's a purple sweet potato leaf, which we just stir fry with garlic, for example. Mm. Um, Maybe maybe you guys would be familiar with moringa. Are you familiar with moringa? It's like a it's like a super food. They're very easy to grow. <laughs> Not from at my house. Yeah. <laughs> so we, so recently a neighbor down the road he's got lots of he planted moringa all throughout the neighborhood, and um, he gave us a few stems so it's coming forth, which is great. We've got uh, one stem here, but it's really a super food. It's a uh, it's it, it's vitamin mineral content is, is oh, amazing. Wow. So um, the Indian community they, they cook the leaves with a, with a dal a lentil curry, mm. which is really yummy. Or you can just stir fry it with um, coconut, dry coconut and uh, dried red chilies. Makes a very nice dish too. And the fruit it produces looks like a like a long pod. And we call it moringe, or means drumstick. Ah. And they make a drumstick curry out of that. Ah, super cool. yummy as well. And then if you let the pods dry on its uh, branch, um, when you open up the pods, they have these seeds inside. And they're bitter, but sweet at the same time. It's quite unusual. And I know people just pop two a day, mm. and it's just like, it's just like your, it's like a, it's like a multivitamin. Mm. And uh, it saves you buying, you know, because people now produce moringa capsules because it's they 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 grind down the leaves. So it's sold in pharmaceutical 
you know, uh, vitamin companies. So it's really, so every part of the tree can be used and its medicinal properties are amazing as a, as a mm. daily sustenance type, you know, Super cool. So I, you yeah, it's really great to I'd be able to grow moringa because you know we can grow it here. So mm. good. Yeah, this is the kaffir lime. The kaffir lime is a double. It's a double lime leaf, mm. um, and it's used a lot in Thai cooking. And with this lime, we use we use the leaf more than we use the actual fruit. Okay. So you know how with most lime fruits, you you want to. It's usually the fruit we're after. In this case, we use the leaf. Mm, oh, wow. um, yeah. yeah, it's much stronger mm. though. Oh, yeah, okay. Thai basil is more basil-y. This mm. is definitely more citrusy. Mm. Um, so mm. we use this in tom yam, oh. in yeah. you know, okay. so many of the Thai dishes and some, some local dishes too. And the fruit it produces, it's wobbly. It's got this sort of oh, wow. like knobbly effect. And it's very hard to juice, which is why we don't grow it for the fruit. Because it's so it's very hard and yeah. it doesn't really extract much juice. Yeah. But the Indian community, they use it for to ward off bad omens. Oh. Um, oh. So they will put it on their altars. They will actually put these limes on their altars. So, mm. it's, uh, uh, so it's interesting how plants also inform a lot of our traditions and cultures around oh, spirituality and stuff mm. too so a lot of that happens with different things mm. so yeah mm. but um so yeah so if you're happy to hang out with us today we yeah. can just